to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. How many of our fathers, how many of us have seen our parents, father and mother, just take out time from their busy schedule to sit together and talk? When was the last time you ever saw your father and your mother thinking of not restaurant in the home there, just sitting down to eat and talk? If they are together, they are quarreling. He's rebuking her. He's lost the dimension of a husband. Many people think the dimension of a husband is only the pre-children dimension. So it's the dimension that a man shows a woman until the arrival of children. From the time the woman gets pregnant, the man feels I've, I've graduated from being a husband. From now henceforth, my work is to be father. Is that not true? And a spiritual head. And so they rob the wife of that emotional dimension. Number two, you are preparing for marriage it means you are preparing to be a father look up let me tell you something you are not a father when you have children the word father is the greek word abba right the bible says he's given his spirit whereby we cry abba father 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 the word abba means source and sustainer not the one who reproduces children necessarily you are a father when you are the originator of a thing and you are the sustainer. Speaking in the context of marriage, you only become a father when you are a provider and protector. Write it down. Fatherhood has nothing to do necessarily with giving birth to children. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. The moment they have a bouncing baby boy or a bouncing baby girl or some children, they convince themselves that they are fathers. No, sir. In the Bible, the Bible's view of fatherhood, listen, the Bible's view of fatherhood is not just reproduction alone. It's the ability to provide and protect. Here's what the Bible says about being a father. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, paraphrasing, that any man that cannot provide, protect, cater for his family, it says that he has lost the faith. He has given up the faith and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Brothers, this is a very serious point and I want you to pay attention. Whether you are married or you are preparing for marriage. Ask yourself, am I a father? You don't become a father when you get married. You get married because you are a father. Many men are not fathers. The hallmark of fatherhood is responsibility. The ability to provide and protect. It says, but if any provide not for his own. So are you a father? Brothers, ask yourself. I want to marry. The question God is asking you is, are you a father? It's not enough to be a husband. You must be a father. You will have to provide the conducive atmosphere. Provide love. Provide food. Provide shelter. Provide security. Provide the enabling environment for your wife and your children to find expression provide spiritual guidance provide mentorship you have to protect your family right protect them against the physical hazards protect them against the the emotional intrusions of society that's what it means to be abba abba so in our generation when a man is married and does not have children we say he's a husband but not yet a father the moment the wife gives birth we say finally i'm now a father wrong societally correct but scripturally wrong fatherhood is about provision and protection no gentleman should get into marriage when you are not a father 
you are not a father by your age you are not a father just by longevity of time you are not a father by the appearance of many children whether spiritual or physical you are a father according to your ability to provide every lady asks the gentleman close to you are you a father don't answer I am matured. I'm not a small boy. Nobody's arguing. We know you are 35. Are you a father? That's what we want to know tonight. Are you a father? I was born 90s. Uh, we are not arguing. Are you a father? You neglect fatherhood when you become irresponsible. All the brothers say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. To be a father indeed say it loud in the name of jesus i receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family say it again i receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family and it starts with your relationship show me how you provide for her and show me how you protect her I'm not just talking of finances necessarily. Show me your attitude towards responsibility. I can discern your nonchalance about life. Nonchalance about people. How many gentlemen do not have this fatherhood consciousness? Let me tell you. When a guy begins to have a fatherhood consciousness, he will travel and go on a trip. Every time he's returning, he's thinking, there are people in my house or there are roommates that I have. What can I buy for them? Even if it's as little as cheese balls, that's fatherhood. A sense of responsibility. Self-centeredness is dying. You know that it's not about me alone. You are satisfied when people drink from your grace, drink from your finances. You are becoming a father. How many of us travel for, for five months, five weeks, you come back and the only thing is the same box you went with. Guys, how you doing? I don't miss you. Nakai, Nawao. And you gist everybody and you see all of them hungry. Say, never chop. And you are just watching. You are not a father. You are a friend. When you call God Father, you are not just calling God Father because you are his son or his daughter. You are calling God father because as your father, he has made it a point of duty to provide for you and to protect you. He provided salvation. He secures that salvation today. He has provided a platform for you to be a partaker of his divine nature. He has provided a platform for you to enjoy the life, the Zoe life here on earth. That's what makes him a father. Many men deceive themselves thinking because they have the ability to produce babies or they have produced babies, they are fathers. Fatherhood is not just about reproduction. Fatherhood is about responsibility. So brothers, God is asking you tonight, are you a father? You can train yourself into fatherhood. You can know that you are a father. You are not a father when you marry. You get married because you believe you are a father now. When you understand this, you will never go and carry any man's daughter to get married to her when you know that there is no means for you to eat. You are not a father. At that point, the lady does not have to start asking you, where are we going to eat food? How is money going to come? Because if you are truly a father, you would have made that factor. You would have factored in as part of your marriage and relationship responsibilities that I am Abba, provider, protector. Is God speaking to us tonight? The third dimension for any gentleman preparing for marriage, the third dimension is as the priest. Every man is instituted by God to be the spiritual head of his home. Ladies, that's why it is important and paramount that you must not compromise on the issue of marrying somebody who loves God. Our parents made that mistake. Many young people who are not exposed to this truth have made the mistake. But now you have an opportunity. It matters. Because according to God, he's the spiritual head. God birthed Adam. And so must be responsible. He's his spiritual head. Eve 
came out of Adam, everybody looks onto its source. According to God's organogram for family, the woman and her children should look up to the man for spiritual support. The man should be the initiator of Bible studies. He should be the one to teach the children on tithing. He should enforce discipline. He should enforce love. Unfortunately, that's not what we have. In many societies, it's the woman who is trying to get the family to be spiritual. Because there are forces of darkness and they are real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Children should be able to come to the parlor and see their father lie down and just worship him and playing worship and just rolling on the floor and giving God praise. I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday. Did you know that the moment you begin to carry out your priestly responsibility, sooner or later your son or daughter will start copying. Have you seen children do that? That you see a father kneel down. Very soon you see the child too will come and kneel down. How many men do you know have taken on their priestly responsibility that while everybody is sleeping at home, you now hear the voice of the priest. Room to whom? Laying hands on the wife and children. These are my children. This is my family. I bring them under the grace, under the prophetic covering. Satan, you have no hand over my wife, over my children. That's what it means to be a spiritual head. Not that they wake you by seven and say, honey, Bible study is five. Say, the day you wake me again, I swear to God, I will slap you. Don't play with me. Please, we are not mates. You are here eating. You don't know how I'm bringing the food. Spiritual head. The spiritual head. Every man must take position. And it starts from the relationship. It starts from the relationship. You must take position. Now it's okay, let's be very sincere. There are times when you can enter a relationship with a lady who is more spiritual than you. Are you willing to catch up? Are you willing to grow? That seed of willingness is what we are looking for. You may not be like that as, the, as at the time you are in the relationship or even marriage. But do you sustain the seed? Speed wiggles what? When he got married, his wife was more spiritual than him. He was a coupler, but he was able to catch up and he became the apostle of faith. How many people have allowed demons to drive their homes into pieces? Your wife is pregnant. That's the time to lay hands on her womb and prophesy. When she gives birth in the hospital, you should be the first to hold the baby. Don't allow anybody just come from anywhere and, and soil the destiny of your child. And then you just come too late and you are shouting, hey, why is the baby big? You should be there, you hold the baby and prophesy. Like Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet. You hold your child and speak into his destiny. Whenever evil is going on in the family, your life and your ministry is turning upside down. You take your regalia of a husband and put it aside. You take your regalia of a father and put it aside. And wear your prophetic and apostolic robe and tell the devil, I'm not just a husband. I'm not an irresponsible man. And you tell all your children, just leave me. I know these forces. Go and sleep. And they hear your voice. That's manhood, brothers and sisters. That's being a man. You take the spiritual atmosphere. You move out with buckets of water oil and anointing oil around the length and breadth of your house. And you are prophesying, commanding the forces of darkness to bow. Your child brings a result. And you find out that the result is not motivating. You lay hands on him and say, you are my son. Everyone looks like his source. I lay my hands on you. Not to get Cain and start flogging him and playing ball with your child. Because he's embarrassing you. Let me tell you. The world that we live in is no longer the world of physical strength. It's the world of spiritual capacity. He may be a bubble, but let him be a man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because a day will come, jeans will not save you. Polo shirt will not drive demons. It is on the strength of the understanding of mysteries. Have you seen families where sickness just breaks out? Mother is sick, brother is sick, father is sick. And you see the man running confused. He has not learned the mysteries. That's the time for him to get communion and say, my wife, prepare communion. Man takatata, and he lays hands on it and says, By this tree, 
The Bible says the spirit, the water, and the blood. And you minister communion to your family. Brothers, I challenge you. Make your home like this. It is within your power to make it so. It may not be so for ladies because they submit to a man. You are not submitting to anybody in the home. That means your home is a reflection of whether you pay attention to what I'm hearing tonight. I've made up my mind that my home will be exactly what I will tell you. I must take on my priestly position. Many men have allowed the devil to ride through their families and wreck and destroy their homes. The Bible says occupy. You occupy through dominion. 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 Your wife gives birth to two or three children and you are expecting more and it looks like the devil has closed up her womb and all of that and you are just, you are just smiling and saying, don't worry, it will happen. What are you saying? Get angry one night and while she's sleeping, you just come and sit by the side of her bed. And when she wakes up, say, no, no, you just continue sleeping. I know what I'm doing. I come in the spirit of Eli and you are speaking and prophesying. Let me tell you, there is no woman I know who will not want that kind of man by her side. A man, ladies, am I speaking to you? Guys, you think ladies just want money. Let me tell you the truth. Many ladies, especially those who are loving God, know sincerely that it takes more than money. You can have all the money in the whole world and anything can go wrong. But a man of stature, not a physically macho man necessarily, a man with capacity in the spirit, that any spirit that is flying around the vicinity of your family, when it gets there, say, hold on, I know this guy. We know, we know the weight he carries in the spirit. When the devil wants to touch your wife, and he realizes that she's bearing your son's name. He knows that that woman has been implicated. Brothers, when you become a husband, a father, and a minister, you are ready for marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So right now, while you are sitting, some of you are husbands, congratulations. Are you a father? Some of you are only priests. Mr. Man, let me tell you, you are not only going to be casting out spirits and devils you don't cast out devils every day right now the atmosphere is okay be a husband be a are you getting what i'm saying now let's go to the ladies quickly please sit down three ladies quickly oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. three ladies worship team Hallelujah. Are you enjoying tonight's teaching? The first dimension, sister, open your eyes, your ears and everything and hear. The first dimension is as a wife. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Let me explain. This is a mother. This, again, is a minister. Now watch this. What does it mean to be a wife? What does it mean to be a wife? Many ladies do not know what it means to be a wife. They think they know. A wife, just like the husband, defines the entire scope of your ministry to your husband. Not your husband and your father. Not your husband and his family. Under the dimension of a wife, your ministry is only to your husband. Let me use this opportunity and challenge many ladies who can keep their men at second place. You love your father, your mother, your brother, your uncle so much. Everything you do to your husband, you do to everyone else. You are not a wife. You are not a wife. That dimension of being a wife is a dimension that creates an office for the man to feel like the man in your life. That is the dimension where you bring the king out of that man. That is the dimension where you let the man know that you are not like all other men. You are exclusive and I demonstrate it in every way possible. By meeting your emotional need, by looking physically attractive for you. Oh yes. Hello. By now, I know you are aware that physical attraction means a lot to men. If you are not aware, you are hearing it now. Are you getting me? Don't think because you get married. I'm not talking of nudity. Don't get me wrong. Are you getting the point? I'm not talking of nudity and seduction. No. No. But I've seen so many men 
depressed over their wife they just get married five years ten years and the woman is looking as if she's hundred years old she does not care she has thrown away her wifehood because she thinks she's giving birth to plenty children and the man is frustrated he looks at another lady who is ten times older than her and she's looking like an angel and his own wife is looking like whatever it is there please don't play games with men let me tell you any man i don't care whether anointing oil is on top of his head jesus is written on top of his head there is a dimension a lady was wired by god to make a man feel like a man if you don't do it it's because of negligence not because you have not been equipped and that has nothing to do with seduction from your physical outlook let the man be proud of you not a lady that you just got married and the man says come and escort me somewhere you just dress as if you are going for a night vigil and he's looking smart looking like a young man you are there embarrassing him and he said honey you can just sit at the car honestly i'll be brief i'll just come and say no no i must come i want to see what you are hiding if nobody has told you i'm telling you now in the name of the lord it matters it matters ladies it matters and it starts from relationship are you a wife when was the last time you made the guy God sent to you feel like a king let me tell you in every brother there is a king it takes a wife to bring that king out are you getting me when you find yourself shouting at a guy and taking advantage of his niceness there are some brothers that are very cool-headed even if you slap them they won't do anything and you deceive yourself to think that because they are cool-headed they are foolish there is a lion in every brother there is a lamb in every brother keep the lion in the cage don't let it come out you won't like it you must make every guy feel like a king Vashti stop being a wife as a result she left the palace Vashti she stopped being a wife when the king wanted to feel like a king she was not available and he sent her out and here came Esther Hadassah Hadassah always made the king feel like a king she prepared a feast for him and he said what's the occasion for the feast she said nothing just heralding your royalty and the king said my goodness please do it again and then by himself he said what do you want to half of my kingdom a man will give you anything if you bring the king in him don't make requests until he becomes a king how many ladies have strangled the king dimension in their men you just come and say um do you know that that other brother bought me a laptop can you serve how many months six months you have been trying to buy a laptop one brother just came out just from church oh no strings attached you are killing the king when there is no king in your kingdom enemies will come keep the king alive ladies keep the king alive there are some things ladies have been doing that a guy is tolerating it does not mean that's how he was designed to live you shout at a guy anyhow and speak to him anyhow he's supposed to see you by seven he comes by eight you don't give him room to explain himself let me tell you this na, 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 na. and you are acting nigerian film there there is a king in every guy don't take the generosity of any man for granted i'm sorry to say this many married women have taken their husbands for granted they do not exalt that king dimension when you got married to him you used to bring food in a tray and be very respectful now you just carry a bottle of juice as if you are selling it just drop it on the table and say um, there's rice in the kitchen and he will get up you see that's the thing with many men they will get up quietly and go and serve themselves but you are endangering your marriage you are endangering your relationship many ladies are embarrassed to be wives because it takes submission to be a wife if you are still driven by ego and i don't want to look cheap you will never be a wife to be a wife you must soil your hand and create a king out of that man but if you can be stupid enough to make that man a king he will be a fool for you that's his reward ladies say after me in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus I receive grace to be a wife indeed sisters hear me don't learn those jargons that you watch on tv there is a difference between secular relationships 
and marriages and kingdom relationships. Please don't let anybody confuse you. A virtuous woman who can find. The Bible says her husband will praise her at the gates. She will do him good all the days of her life. Can you honestly say from the day you started going out with that guy, you have brought joy. Ask yourself, have you brought joy? Don't lie. From the time you started going out with the guy, have you brought joy to his life? Or heartbreak, his finances went down, his reputation went down, his spiritual life went down, his ego went down, his sense of purpose went down. You are not a wife. He that finds a wife, you must be a wife to be found. It's not marriage that makes you a wife. When a man comes to you, it's a sign that you have become a wife. He that finds a wife, not a woman. There are many women, there are few wives. He that finds a wife. Number two, mother. Watch this, mother. In one word, a mother is the maker of the home. The key word under motherhood is sacrifice. There are many ladies who have paid the price to be wives. They can give any guy the kind of love he wants. They can cook for the guy. They can do everything but they are not mothers. Ladies, I challenge you to have an elderly woman in your life who will not feel embarrassed to teach you motherhood. Ladies, I challenge you in the name of the Lord. Do not allow westernization suck out the dimension of motherhood in you. Motherhood. A man can build a house, but it takes a woman to make a home. A man cannot make a home. A man can build a house and put chairs in it. A home talks of the emotional climate, creating the conducive atmosphere for love, the conducive atmosphere for unity, the conducive atmosphere for progress and peace is the responsibility of a woman. I challenge the school of ministry and I said, when I come to anybody's house, there are three things, ladies, I will look at in your house to prove to me whether you are a mother indeed. Number one, your kitchen. Your kitchen is a reflection of your motherhood ability. Kitchen. That's where the meals are made. Right? That's where the health of the people is preserved. There are many people, their kitchen is a mess. There are many young ladies. You dress well, you wear new clothes, but your kitchen is a mess. Five-day-old plates, one-week-old plates, roaming around in the kitchen here. The sink is dirty. You look at the cookers, palm oil, everything on it. You see bread that has fungi. To carry it and throw it, you, lift it, you leave it there. The trash can is filled with dirt. You are not a mother. You may be a good wife, but not a good mother. The Bible says she wakes up in the morning talking about her motherhood dimension while it is yet early and prepares something for the children. Proverbs 31. And she comes to cover them to make sure they are warm in winter. That's a mother. A homemaker. Sisters, are you mothers? Are you mothers indeed? That's a question God is helping us to understand tonight. Many ladies are not mothers, but you can be mothers. If you make that decision tonight so your kitchen number two your toilet the toilet in many homes is a disaster a disaster plus plus disaster one universal towel used by everybody including visitors one universal sponge right a sponge that looks like a rag torn into pieces and the woman cannot buy another one listen let me tell you ladies there are some responsibilities that are not for men don't let anyone fool you if you see a man doing it he's doing it out of love he won't do it forever you can't expect a man to go to the market and go and buy new buckets and bring it back home and say i notice buckets are empty please don't insult the man there is a king in every man i'm not saying men cannot do it but what is your own role a child is running out of the house mucus everywhere torn trouser you see you see children running out of homes no clothes and he runs and hugs somebody outside and the man is feeling embarrassed and the wife is just looking won't you come in to come in and see the other things toilets 
you look at the toilet and people is, is not flushed it's not clean there is no water people bath and they leave the remaining water there the second person comes to add his water on it and now baths. All kinds of things happen. Come on, let's tell ourselves the truth. Many homes have dirty toilets. Ladies, make sure you are not praying for an award-winning man to keep him in that kind of atmosphere. Shout no way. I hope so. I really hope so. How many ladies are not proactive they get up and go to the market only to shop clothes and hair. And you cannot buy soap. The man is rushing because he has to catch up with an appointment. Ah, soap is finished. And the wife said, sorry, honey. And he now checks. Ah, the towel, this, there's no water. Merua has not come. All kinds of domestic things. You want the man to do everything. No, that's the dimension of your mother. A man returns back from work, tired and hungry. And that's when the woman lazily drags herself trying to break pieces of eggs and, and open up indomie to make dinner and yet when they ask you who do you want to marry they say you know what i want to marry no are you preparing god is not a wicked man to carry his son that has been sweating in the vineyard and come and keep you and then you strangle him to death there are many men that are heartbroken as a result of the way their wives trivialize them please ladies listen god is speaking to us don't you ever if you if a man has not talked to you about it i promise you it's just because he's tolerating you it's not because he's enjoying it there are men who can just take up with anything but don't 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 push men to the wall it's god helping us and then number three your living room your parlor you enter the parlor and everything is scattered water pours on the ground the carpet is dirty pieces of paper around children roaming around everything is unkept the moment you own the fan you see dust all over the parlor and many mothers don't train their children how many ladies get up in the morning and know that part of their assignment is to make sure that their rooms are clean it starts with your own room now don't wait till you are in a bungalow you want to stay in a duplex of eight rooms are you ready to sweep it don't just say oh god i'm tired of poverty are you ready to sweep it i want a room with this i want an extra room with an aquarium every honor comes with responsibility is God speaking to us tonight? If you listen to what I'm saying, I promise you, 10 years, 20 years from now, you will thank me for what I'm sharing with you. Your living room. The key word under motherhood is sacrifice. Sisters, look at me very carefully. If you are unwilling to let go things right now, you are not a mother. I'm telling you this. You are not a mother. There are ladies who cannot give up their food. They cannot share anything. There are ladies who, even if you have one million naira, and a guy stands here with one thousand naira, you want him to buy something of nine hundred naira for you, and keep hundred naira. What sort of person are you? Once there is no heart of sacrifice, you are not a mother, because a good mother will inconvenience herself. A good mother will protect the image of the father and the husband have you seen many of our mothers do a lot of things and give the honor and the credit to the husband the man has no idea visitors are coming to the house and they come and they see all kinds of meals different types and the friends of the man turn and say ah ah promise promise your house is heaven or netto and you see him laughing he did not contribute anything to that table but he's happy and the woman because she's a good woman she's happy they will ask her they say madam you are really enjoying no that means your husband is taking care of you and she'll say bless god not that she'll call the person aside and say see this is my initiative i did it because i fear god if i'm to wait for this idiot nothing will happen in this house How many of you right now can do good and give the credit to the man God has given you and not be ashamed? Ladies, how many of you can do that? That you are the one that dressed him well and when he comes out and people are saying, Kai, you have an excellent dress sense, you keep quiet. Hmm. 
not that you look and say you're excellent care. Dress sense. I was almost passing the night at the tailor's place to make sure they finish the clothes. Now you are giving the credit to him. A mother does not want any glory for herself. Her pride is that her husband and children are lifted, even at her expense. That's why you see a woman can carry her food when a visitor comes and the husband says, is there anything to eat? She says, ah, yes, yes. Whereas that food she's saying yes to is her meal. And she will run to the kitchen, turn it in another plate, warm it quickly, and come and the children are saying, mommy, boy, you have not eaten. They don't worry. She's protecting the image of the family. You must receive grace to be a mother. Number three, every woman is a priest too. Every woman, listen, and this applies most especially to single moms and women who maybe their husbands are bereaved and so on and so forth. That there is no man in your life, whether technically or directly, if there is no man in your life, you must still perform that role of priesthood. I read a book some years ago, The Power of a Praying Wife. And that book changed my life. Every woman must be on her knees. This is your altar in the home. Every woman must create an altar. Especially if you are marrying a man of God. Don't wait until scandals kill him and eat up his ministry. Where will you be at the point where Jezebel is killing him and destroying his image? There is a way you can know that your husband is getting busy. He's getting busy and spiritually he's not intact. You can discern that he's going down. That's the time to go on your knees and intercede for him. You see him making foolish decisions. He's a leader over millions of people. One decision can implicate him. There are psychophants. There are newspapers waiting to discredit his grace. A true priest is a woman who can pray and fast. And stand in and say, Lord, I'm praying for my husband. I'm praying for my family. Men, no matter how discerning we are, most times we don't discern marital evil fast till it destroys us. I can hug 30 ladies right now, as generous as possible. A lady can sit down and know the one that hugged me from the spirit and the one that hugged me from the flesh. A guy will not know. The guys will say, man, Kai, you're a very nice person. But a lady will look and say, Kai, now. Nah. Way. this this one i felt something in me when when that lady hugged that brother my spirit told me that this hug is, is too generous for just a normal godly expression of love that means god has given you that spiritual equipping to save the man from danger how many women sit down and have dreams and you see the life and the business and the ministry of your husband crushing god didn't just show you to keep it a man is going on a trip and you started sensing in your spirit maybe accident why don't you discuss and say honey let's pray say oh, let him go and then something happens he returns back on bike and tells you the car is damaged and he said oh i saw it oh i saw it what did you do about it remember the wife of herod let me prove this to you remember the wife of herod she had a dream and she saw the innocence of jesus she got up and told her husband this man is innocent I know you people want to kill him. My spirit tells me he's innocent. Throw away that thief Barabbas. Let them crucify him. Leave this innocent man. But they didn't listen to her. How many men have ignored the priestly roles of their wives to their detriment? Brothers, let me tell you. I shared with the school of ministry students. There is a prophetic dimension in every woman. It's just that that prophetic dimension is fragile. You must love her and honor her prophetic office and then you will benefit from it. Men, because we are egotistic people, every little thing, you turn to a lady and say, I beg, she's a lady. I know that they are emotional. There are times that ladies can handle intelligent things emotionally. But let me tell you something. There are times that in the midst of their emotionalism, they can speak forth the counsel of God. There are times a, a man sits down and is trying to do business with some friends and you see his wife keeps quiet. She's not hearing the conversation but her spirit, her spirit and she says, honey, I don't know what is going on but I am sorry. I'm not disrespecting you but this is your oil thing you have been doing. From the day you started it, something in my spirit, I sense God doesn't want you to be there. You say, God doesn't want me to be there. Are you aware? Have you seen the last PTA letter? Have you seen how they have increased the school fees? 
It's now 150,000. Please don't annoy me. And the woman says, I'm sorry. Until the day they now call and say, Madam, are you Mrs. So, so so? Please come and identify your husband in the prison. We just locked him up. There is a priestly dimension to every lady. Brothers, please don't let the beauty of any sister fool you. Beauty without God is nonsense. Are you hearing me? I repeat, beauty without God is nonsense. The beauty of a lady can fade like a leaf. Added to that beauty, add spirituality. Add spirituality. Add spirituality. One of my greatest joys is that by the grace of God, some of the people who have risen from this ministry and have gotten married, almost every one of them I know of, they are enjoying heaven on earth because of some of these principles. You never go to their homes and see cat and dog. No, you never see that kind of thing. There is love. The homes may not be perfect, but I tell you there is God in that home. They love themselves. They are living by the principles of the kingdom. so ladies there are three dimensions to you the first dimension is what a wife and the, your ministry as a wife is to your husband alone please don't think in-laws are equal to your husband don't think children are equal to your husband there is a way you concentrate on children and refuse your husband you are not doing him good there is a way you concentrate on in-laws. There are ladies who will rather their in-laws be exalted than their husband. Every time you see cow tail pepper soup, in-laws are coming. You have never prepared it for your husband. Gary in the morning, the remaining in the evening. That's how the man lives. You starve that man because he has vowed to be faithful to you. He has lived in a prison because of his commitment to be faithful. If I were a lady, ah. see, there is what you do to a man. Even if a woman is walking naked, you just say you are joking. You know, you are joking. Temptation goes kilometers away because there is absolutely no reason except demonic oppression why he should look at another woman what in the world ladies i challenge you i want you to lock your husband's attention to you it's as if you are programming him keep him to look at you all the days of your life and have no reason whatsoever to look at another woman the power is within you it's within you every time jezebel wants to come and destroy a home they usually use the lapses of the woman there is usually something a woman is ignoring that somebody does if you are not cooking well for the man and you have not paid attention to learn new meals you only know how to cook six meals yam beans jollof your traditional food and and and, and maybe any other thing chips how can the man eat just that all the days of his life during the meeting in office they try to give him a sumptuous meal he rejects it because he wants to come and honor you he doesn't want to come back satisfied and you start suspecting him and so he rejects a meal that would have given him joy all through that night and comes back home and meets a disaster and the, the pain is he knows that that disaster will be repeated again and again and again and so a woman now starts calling him by 10 30 hello sir sorry oh please don't be offended I know that uh, I don't deserve to be calling you. And the man is saying, who is this trying to bring the king out of me? What is all this? I say, sorry, sir. Don't, don't be offended. Um, I, I just wanted to find out. Have you eaten, sir? Who is this? It's your secretary. Please, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope, I, I hope I'm not interrupting your mood. And the man will say, no, 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 no. Bye-bye. He will off it as if he was courageous. But a seed is being sown. And he's saying, I cast this. What is all that? The next day again, sir, have you arrived home safely? And while he's doing that, the woman is watching Nigerian film and laughing. Wicked girl, let the man punish you. Whereas your family, your family is on fire. There's fire on the mountain. Oh, I know it. Come on.
and there is fire on the mountain you are about to face a bitter experience the woman is calling and then the man now calls her back and says what is it why are you disturbing me she says no sir i thought as a secretary i should really find out about your your well-being i just wanted to uh, you didn't look very nice in the office and then he says uh, uh, you know gm spoiled my mind i mean what is all that i'm an innocent person you don't need to tell me sir i know i have always known that you're an exceptional man i mean the, the, your file come through my table the king another woman is bringing the king out of that man madam fire on the mountain your home is at let me tell you don't think because he's a pastor he's not a human being don't think because he's a reverend with collar on his neck the moment satan finds out that you are ignoring your role somebody will start playing the role and we live in a generation where there is an average of three to five ladies for every available man and so there are people who are not desperate they are not ashamed to be as desperate as anything he comes up in the morning to the office and there's a hot cup of coffee say i i saw your schedule for today and i saw that car your day is busy and i thought you really need to be agile and working and the man locks the door and says what is this woman doing to me oh god you know i'm faithful i i'm married to one woman and carries the picture of his wife and puts it on the table so that the woman will come and see and when she comes she says wow what a lovely woman i can imagine the way you are doing well in your house with this woman women are wise they know exactly what to say says i can imagine i mean no wonder if you have a pretty woman like this you should be eating well she's she's not an idiot she knows exactly how to get the man and keeps you in a position where you now have to contemplate i'm eating well am i am i no very soon you start coming home with her you start coming home with her and the nonchalant wife is insensitive and she does not recognize that before you know it one day the woman will find out that whether she meets her husband emotionally or not he doesn't care whether she cooks for him or not he has stopped quarreling her let me assure you somebody has sat down on the throne of your office comfortably and is enjoying your husband you can keep the name while she keeps the experience She may not want to marry him. Keep the name. Dear Mrs. Whatever. While she keeps the experience. Every time we hear that a man fell. Or a man is sleeping around. People are so quick to call the man idiot, stupid. You claim you are born again. The question I want to ask is where was the woman? Where was the woman when that was happening? It is not good. The Bible never said it is not good for a woman to be alone. A woman can be alone but it is not good god knows why he said it is not good in other words it is dangerous it's better for the man to be a celibate supernatural grace comes upon him but when he's married madam don't play games with your husband god bless you one more thing and we're done today are you blessed so far i want to share on what i call the biblical pathway to finding a life partner end there pray in tongues for one minute thank you Jesus I believe that this will heal relationships and heal homes just give me a few minutes and let me say what I'm about to say very seriously thank you Jesus the biblical pathway to finding a life partner please look up everyone is there a method or a formula if you want to say to finding a life partner because it looks like the church is largely confused i shared with you a few things from prophetic confusion to here and there the interesting thing when i was doing a little research for this message i found something that shocked me there were all kinds of ways that people married in the bible let me give you a few all kinds of ways good bad ugly for instance hosea finds and marries a prostitute hosea chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 you don't need to write it just listen moses finds a man with seven daughters he waters the flock and carries a wife free of charge 
Exodus 2 verse 16 to 21. Boaz buys a land and with that property he finds a poor lady and she becomes his wife. What a coincidence. Ruth chapter 4 from verse 5 to 10. Are you blessed? The Benjaminites in Jude 21 verse 19 to 25, they stole women and ran away with them. That's how the women, that's how they married. So just go to a camp, steal a woman, disappear with her. <clears throat> Jacob, he labored for seven years times two. Genesis 29 verse 15 to 30. Seven years of toiling and labor. Got the wrong wife, labored for another seven years, got the one he wanted. 14 years labor to get a wife. 29 verse 15 to 30 of Genesis. David, he kills Goliath, gets rich, marries the king's daughter, and frees his house from paying tax. That's how he got his wife. 1 Samuel 17 verse 25. The king swore that whoever defeats Goliath, he will give him his wife, he will make him rich, and the family will no longer pay tax. Ahasuerus, was rich enough to organize a beauty contest where all the virgins in the land were brought and he got a wife. Esther chapter 2 from verse 3 to 4. David kills Uriah and marries his wife. So in the Bible, people killed people and married their wife. Second Samuel 11. Solomon found out that marrying one or two is not the way. So he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Second Kings 11 verse 1 to 3. These are different skills and strategies. People explore this marriage thing in the Bible. 1,000 women in his life so that he can be faithful. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 35 just said, look, all this thing is a mess. Let me just serve God and leave. And so he refused to get married. Now you see, I just did a little rundown. There were times when there are more like capturing slaves. You capture a slave and turn her into your wife. So if you read the Bible without the wisdom of the spirit, you will be deceived. Which of the method will you choose? Kill a man's wife? Kill a man's husband? A woman's husband? And marry, and marry her? Or go to a vineyard and buy real estate? and everything in it plus the woman is a sign that is your wife or organize a beauty contest and then do it like the bachelor and then the finest becomes your wife or marry 1000 women or defeat as federal government what they will give you if you will fight terrorism maybe you marry the president's daughter Anyway, the point here is this. There are many examples. The Bible, interestingly. Now, I don't know why exactly. But the Bible does not exactly give us a direct formula. Like salvation. You know, when it comes to salvation, there's a formula. Is that true? There is a way you know you are not saved. There is a way you know you are saved. But for marriage, um, it seemed as though there was no exact formula. And I believe the reason is because we are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. But then I've been able to bring up a few things that I want us to look at. We may not have the time to consider two incidences in the Bible. Adam, the first marriage in Genesis 2.21. Let's just look at it if you can help us. Okay. Genesis 2.21. Let's just turn there so that we'll hurry up and pray. Genesis 2.21. I want to bring out a few points that will bless us. Genesis 2 21. Genesis 2 21. If you are there, say amen. And the rib, listen, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, the point here, the key verse is verse 23. And Adam said, This is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Watch this. So, the wife that Adam married 
was made of the same material the same substance the same ideology the same conviction are we getting some points there now so adam married a woman who was made of the same substance if she was a lion their substance will not be compatible so we see compatibility as a key here it had to be a woman who was taken out of him had the same composition with him spiritual composition psychological composition biological composition you never marry a man or a woman that does not sustain the same composition with you there will be big trouble i wanted to talk on genesis 24 the story of isaac that's the first show in the bible where a man goes to look for a wife for another person but let's just jump that points to note there are no there is no physical formula provided for finding a wife but there are scriptural guidelines there is no physical formula in the bible the bible scatters guidelines and i've been able to bring five scriptures that if you use they will guide you to make a very godly decision ready number one proverbs 18 22 proverbs 18 22 if you can help us media let's just hurry up proverbs 22 proverbs 18 verse 22 okay look up please read with me inside and outside one to read who saw what find that a wife find that a good thing and obtains favor so automatically the bible shows us that the process of getting a wife will demand responsibility on the part of the man there will be action it will involve you the word fine it then says whosoever picks a wife or whosoever prays a wife to come whosoever finds a wife it gives an idea of searching it gives an idea of desire that means there will be commitment if you want to get married action will be required on your own part the bible says whosoever finds a wife you're not going to sit down where you are and want a lady to come and meet you it's not going to happen that way regardless of whether you saw a vision or not there will be an initiation there will be a step you must take number two amos chapter 3 verse 3 it buttresses on genesis chapter 2 amos 3 verse 3 very quickly please amos 3 verse 3 this is the grand key i believe to a successful marriage and relationship the key to a successful marriage is not love it has been proven again and again that love is not enough to keep marriage can two work together except they what be agreed the word be agreed is the word compatible 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 measures your degree of agreeableness spiritual agreeableness psychological agreeableness similarity in ideologies about god about money about life about parenting two will work together if they are compatible are you getting what i'm saying now very important that means come that means it doesn't matter whether i saw her in a vision or in a dream whether i saw myself wearing a bow tie and she was wearing a white wedding gown and a flower came from heaven and said this flower is your marriage flower i don't care what you saw or did not see if there is no compatibility imagine for instance that this is my wife i get married to this young lady right and i'm praying in tongues or she is praying in tongues and i'm turning and say what is that i don't believe in praying in tongues two are not working together I believe in spending and wastage i believe in my ego i rather let children die to be giving donations to church and that's not her mindset you see that there is friction so what is your ideology about god bless you what is your ideology about god what is your ideology about money what is your ideology about culture 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 What's your ideology about ministry? 
A man of God, for instance, goes to get a lady because she's fine. Have you seen whether what is her passion about ministry? Otherwise, she will be fine for nothing and destroy your church. When she's supposed to be a model, she cannot sacrifice. She can't lay down her life to be the mother figure for the church. Is God speaking to us? I want you to write this down and start it. Never. I don't care what you see in the spirit. Never, brothers, ask a lady out who you are not compatible with. You are going to destroy her or she will destroy you. Even if she does not have every ideology straightened out, does she have the teachability? Sisters, does he have the teachability? It's not just that he's in a jeep. What is his ideology about managing challenges? Otherwise, you are a Christian. You will get married to him. He tells you he's a Christian. And the next thing, he brings the tail of an antelope. Or the tail of any animal. And hangs it as a jazz. And says, see, I know I'm a Christian. But let me tell you, my great grandfather had this thing. It's like that in our culture. Everybody brings it. If you don't understand, just keep it there. That's supposed to be a Christian. He wakes up in the morning and he's making incantations on that tail. And you are saying, my goodness, what did I get married to? And you know by spiritual intelligence that you are in trouble. But you claim you were marrying a rich man. Now you've married disaster. Even if you never see one vision, even if you never hear anybody's name, by the time you find a lady that is compatible in ideology, I guarantee you, except the word of God is a lie, you will have an exceptional marriage. That is the reason why unbelievers, although when they married, they were not born again, because they had compatibility, they still are together. And Christians who are born again, because they think born again will solve compatibility. The Bible says it is better to sit at the roof of your house than to be with a contentious and angry woman. You are a man of God. You know where God is taking you to. Now you go and carry a lady that is lazy. You carry a lady that is weak, crying over everything. Let me tell you, two of you are born again, but just know that that, that family is on its way to crash down. I tell you the truth. Don't, don't unnecessarily just spiritualize things and say no I know my God is able this girl the way she prays Mr. Man can, is she going to be able to cook for you that's the reason why I encourage people the moment you start a relationship part of the many responsibilities of the man is take the lady to your whether your church or your meeting place wherever is your primary place of spiritual feeding do you know what let me tell you if a brother in koinonia ask a lady out in koinonia the probability of them having an exceptional marriage is even above 90 percent why because their ideologies are similar they are hearing the same thing and they believe the same thing are you getting what i'm saying now not that we say okay we are fasting for 10 days and the wife is pulling her mouth all around and angry and saying this 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 thing me i don't like all this kind of thing so what kind of 10 day fast eh what is all that and the man is saying look look look, look we're going far we're going far or a woman who hates excellence and is ready to manage anything but the man is ready to stay verse number three proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 very interesting scripture when I stumbled across this, it blessed me in no small way. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says, houses and riches. Meaning, your father and mother, your parents, you can inherit houses and riches. But when it has to do with a woman, you must involve God. Are you hearing now? It says a prudent wife is from the Lord. Meaning if you ignore God, you throw God out of the equation because you believe 
that this God, every time God comes in, he messes my relationships and makes me to take a decision. Many people hate God until they enter a relationship. They now go to God and say, Lord, this is hereby introducing my life partner. And God will say, you chose it. Go ahead. By the time you see Pepe in the, in the relationship or the marriage, you now turn and say, God, where were you? God says, I was here all the while. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come in. If you give me entrance. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. A prudent wife and by extension, a prudent husband is from the Lord. You cannot use the seeing of the eye to know that a man will still be faithful after 10 years. Men can change. As at the time you meet the man, he doesn't have money. You don't know what his tendencies are. You cannot use the beauty and the physique of a lady just to believe that this is my wife. Oh God, no matter what you say, Mba Keba Serija, a prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from the Lord. So involve God. These are the guidelines that the Bible gives us. So number one, there is a finding. You will take action. And for ladies, you will position yourself. Brothers, if you ever want a wife, stop sitting down and just saying visions and visions and visions. I will round up with the issue of visions. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Number four, Isaiah 30 verse 21. It's another guideline that the Bible gives us. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Very, very powerful. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, 21. Media 30, 21, please. Isaiah 30. Okay. And thy ears shall what? Hear a voice behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left it says you will hear a voice in other words expect the leadership of the holy spirit in helping you choose a life partner expect it the bible gives you a guarantee that you will hear a voice leading you my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice And then lastly, Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Everybody read. This is the cost dimension of marriage and relationships. Ready? Want to read. seated not down first and counted the cost whether he has what sufficient to what finish not start the building not start the marriage which of you intending to build a marital tower will not first sit down and start counting the cost am i ready to pay the school fees of children Am I ready to be responsible over a woman and her family? Am I ready to live with one woman all the days of my life and be faithful? Am I ready to grow old with this man and grow old with this woman? Am I ready to love her like my life? Am I ready to protect her? Am I ready to die for my family? This is a guideline. No matter what vision you see, no matter what dream you have god will not count the cost for you this is where we miss it god can show you that shall harm is your wife but if you don't count the cost it will still fail it does not mean god lied five scriptures that if any man uses sincerely as a guideline you will make a good relationship you will make an exceptional relationship now let me round up by saying this according to scripture the prophetic is not the doctrine or the primary channel through which god reveals life partners no while it is true that at least in two places in scripture 
we see God directly involved in bringing revelation and confirmation about a life a man's life partner number one is the prophet Hosea we see God himself asking him to go and marry a prostitute but we understand that that was a prophetic message prophets those people were they were actors God will literally use their life to act out a script and explain the harlotry of Israel to, the, to her so he told Hosea to go and marry a prophet called Goma and so that with her harlotry she will leave him and then you say the pain you feel is the pain I always feel when Israel goes to bow to other gods number one number two we see Joseph being afraid knowing that Mary was with child he wanted to divorce her quietly and the angel appears and gives a divine confirmation don't be afraid to take her as your wife are, are you getting the point now no other place I know in scripture where you find God giving direct revelations no there are guidelines there are principles now does God reveal spouses to people yes he does but I believe strongly that there are two conditions for that number one is based on your personal degree of intimacy and relationship with God and your level of yieldedness to him there is a way I can walk with God and earn certain privileges on on the strength of my intimacy with him I have so given all to God that he knows that whatever choice he makes for me I am that dead to say yes to him based on that God is able to open you up and give you the privilege of using visions and revelations it is rather a unique case or use a prophet to speak to you another key that justifies prophetic revelation is the nature and the kind of assignment there are certain kinds of assignment that will necessarily involve you marrying certain kinds of women or men for instance being in ministry as a man of God because of the nature of your call God will not allow you to just marry anybody you will find out that there are probings and there are dealings God will be exceptionally meticulous aside from these two instances every other means of marriage in the Bible is simply not just waiting for what you call God's timing are you seeing the mistake now God's timing is when you become a husband when you become a father when you become what when you become that it is time for marriage because male and female he created them and God already gave a command be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth when woman was was brought into the scene God saw that it is good so waiting forever to say God wants me to marry in 2020 or God wants me to marry at 50 that's why at 45 I'm not married no 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 it is absolutely up to you if you delay marriage because you are trying to be a husband a father and a priest I salute you don't let anybody push you under pressure and say marry or as a lady if you feel that you need some space to become a wife a mother and a priest I also salute you because it is a sign of honor to both your husband and your wife respectively so the church has been caught up in all these illusions because there has not been a very we have complicated the issue of marriage whereas it is a very very simple thing look at me any brother here that believes that you have trained yourself to be a husband a father and a priest I guarantee you the gates are open for you for marriage and no demon in hell will stop you and any lady that truly you can know you are prepared some of you right now at once you will stop praying oh God when will he come right now you are seeing that truly truly you are not prepared especially for the kind of person you want let me balance this if you have a vision and a dream of a man or a lady keep it to yourself and keep moving on are you hearing what i'm saying 
this advice is a blessed advice that will honor you the bible says and mary kept these things to herself whether it comes to pass it should not ruin your life whether there is vision or not we see in part and we prophesy in part whether there be tongues they will go away whether there be prophecy they will end but thy word O lord is settled in heaven prophecy and visions should never be exalted above the word that will become the secret to disappointment so if god shows you a guy thank god for it if god shows you a lady thank god for it keep those visions honor them but keep preparing to follow the truths of the written word if it so happens that god brings a person and confirms his word glory be to god and we give him praise if it so happens that things did not work exactly as shown in the vision lord i give you praise i am growing are you getting that this is a recipe for freedom otherwise there will keep being repeated cycles of heartbreaks and disappointment in the church right now when brothers and sisters are getting married there are people who come for weddings with heart shattering pain they sit down and it's almost like a nightmare as they watch the man they have always desired being given to another woman or they watch the lady they've seen all their lives in a dream listen we exalt the word of God above any dream above any vision that's the reason why you can dream and see five different ladies at five different times do not allow yourself to be discouraged because not everything may be a lie it may be true however make up your mind that this word that abides forever will become your key so my brother the key to your marriage is in your hands my sister the key to your marriage is in your hands it's not in the hands of a dream it's not in the hands of a prophet it's not even in the hands of god he has given it to you when you become a husband when you become a wife when you become a father when you become a mother and when you become priests you are ready for marriage when you are ready to end prophetic and spiritual confusion when you are ready to make your standard reasonable for a man to come into your life or your standard reasonable to get a godly wife when you are ready to refuse ungodly parental influences destroying your life when you are ready to make alternatives for your finance and your establishment and when you are finally ready to involve God in your life, then you are ready for marriage. Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands and begin to bless the Lord for tonight. The entrance of your word give it light and understanding to the simple. Koinonia, lift your voice and pray. Thank the Lord for this freedom. Many of us have been free from captivities that have held us down. Mindsets that have stopped us from moving forward. Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Number one lift your voice and pray and say father in any way i have been the reason for lack of relationship or marriage or lack of joy in my marriage i repent right now i ask you to help me lift your voice and pray all the five things we have written in any way oh god please pray from your heart very quickly in any way i have allowed the misconceptions the perfect match to stop me from entering a godly relationship thank you for opening my eyes in any way i have raised unreasonable standards and expectations financially in terms of establishment in terms of physical outlook I change my mind right now in any way ungodly parental influences are trying to destroy my marital destiny 
in any way i have reduced my standard of spirituality and morality i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace prayer point number two i like you to pray every one of us those three dimensions into your life especially the one you know is not at work you're a guy pray for a husband father and priest you're a lady pray for a wife a mother and a priest lift your voice and cry to god lord i'm a husband but i'm not yet a provider and a protector I'm an exceptional husband in the name of Jesus a blessing to my wife I'm an exceptional father hallelujah for those of us trusting God for a very sound and a godly relationship lift your voice and cry to God the Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing a lady that positions herself to be found has also done a good thing lift your voice and pray Lord I will not make a mistake in my marriage I will not just judge by the eyes alone whose ideology is similar with me concerning God a submissive lady a lady who loves God a guy who fears the Lord a man who is faithful the Bible says a prudent wife is from the Lord speak to me speak to me concerning the person that you will for me speak to me concerning the person that is appropriate for me hallelujah listen make up your mind that your home will be an exceptional home make up your mind that your relationship will be an exceptional relationship make up your mind that everything about your life will be exceptional an exceptional father an exceptional husband an exceptional priest an exceptional wife an exceptional uh, uh, mother exceptional priest father in the name of jesus i pray may there be miracles of marriages in koinonia in the name of jesus christ i pray that all the marriages that will happen in koinonia that all through the lifespan of that marriage the couple will never have a cause to regret in the name of jesus christ Father, I pray that you supernaturally connect our brothers to our sisters. May they not become sources of heart pain for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because you are challenging us and working on our mindsets. My God, I pray in the name of Jesus that every brother here that is not fit to be a good husband, good father, and a good priest, Lord, begin to work on them. And every sister that is not yet fit to be a wife a good wife a good mother and a good priest lord begin to work on them in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that we will have exceptional homes from this place in the name of jesus christ that everyone will look at your relationship and look at your home and desire your kind of relationship in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen now listen look up the greatest marriage is not the marriage between a man and a woman the greatest marriage as he said in the book of Hosea I think chapter 6 I have betrothed you I have begotten you this is God speaking the greatest marriage is the marriage between the lamb and the church he says I speak of Christ and his church there are people here who have not experienced that spiritual marriage that reconnection to the God of your salvation you have not made your like a faithful bride 
you have not come back to your husband to repent and to be reconnected there are others who have given their lives to jesus christ but for some reason you found yourself derailing tonight this is home for you there are many people outside at the sound of my voice and some inside i want to guide you in the next one minute to make it right with jesus this is the greatest marriage wherever you are please leave your seat and make your way to the front right now koinonia celebrate them as they come those who are making their ways right please don't let anybody come before you make your way and come to the front don't let anybody stop you god bless you they are coming they are coming from inside and outside god bless you don't be ashamed jesus is calling you god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming inside and outside god bless you god bless you keep coming keep coming if there are more people please make your way to the front hallelujah praise the lord lift your hands and say after me lord jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me you shed your blood for me tonight i make up my mind and i make you lord of my life I repent of my sins wash me with your precious blood and in the name of Jesus my life will never be the same in the name of Jesus now thank you for making this great decision I like you to follow the gent the, the lady that is waving her hands just turn you see a lovely lady waving her hands they will have your details and we'll welcome you celebrate him please hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for